You've heard of Thor and all those mighty ones with hammers and all those cool tools and beards. Lightnings? And shit. Yeah, absolutely I have. Of course, I went to school. What are you saying? I didn't go to school? Come on. <laughs> well, if you didn't go to school, here are the top 10 scandalous gods in ancient history. Ooh. We'll skip to the scandalous cool ones. Kicking off the list at number 10, Hermes. This quick little lad sure is light on his feet, but he's also got a few tricks up his little sleeve. He's not an innocent guy. He's known as the messenger because, you know, he's that fast and all. He's Fast as f boy. Hermes is the son of Zeus and Maya. And as far as parents go, eh, that's not bad. That's that's pretty good. Pretty good uh, pretty good cards dealt in that scenario. He was destined for greatness with his speed and agility. Poems and plays remember the mythical man as quick physically, but he was also quick with his decisions. He could change his mind in the blink of an eye. You can't keep up with him, really, in any sense. His agility allowed him to glide effortlessly between three realms, the three main worlds in mythological ancient Greece, those being heaven, the underworld, and the third, which is often forgotten, the sea. He was a messenger of the gods, but he was also a hashtag prankster. Yeah, classic. When he was just an infant god, he hopped out of his crib and stole cattle. Scandalous gods in history? Yeah, Hermes stole somebody's cattle. TMZ would eat this speedster alive if it was today. Number nine, Odin. In every story, in every myth, book, movie, there has to be a big bad guy. And for Norse gods and mythology, that's Odin. It's Big Daddy, and he's here to cause some scandal. He was the king of the gods and a father to many more. We could probably make a whole list on him, but Taylor and I do have to go home at some point. Looking at his track record, it can leave you with mixed feelings. Not Taylor, I meant I meant Odin. Taylor's a good guy. Don't he's he's never he's not never been a criminal. Sorry, Taylor. He created this and that, he gave life to many, but he also took it away unalived imprisoned and tormented and, and a whole list of things that would have the YouTube gods upset. And let me tell you guys, those are some of the gods you really don't want to upset. You don't want them on your bad side. Number eight, Aphrodite. The Greek goddess of love and beauty. Oh boy, cover your eyes for this one, Big Chad. You don't want to see any of this. Yeah, this is, this is dirty, this is dirty stuff. Hit that thumbs up for Aphrodite. The dirty one. Aphros translates to foam, and Hesiod's Theogony tells us that Aphrodite was born from the white foams of heaven. Nice. I was born in Ajax. At first, Aphrodite was worshipped as a goddess of the sea, but in Sparta, she was seen as the goddess of war. Yeah, the goddess had around 17 children with seven different men. And by men, I mean Olympian gods. Yeah, yeah I'm just grabbing coffee with my ex, you know, Poseidon. Relax, Trevor, it's fine. We're just friends. Aphrodite was one of the three contestants in winning the Golden Apple. The Golden Apple was given to the most beautiful goddess at the time, and it was between her, Hera, and Athena. It was a tough one. Aphrodite promised the then Prince of Troy, Paris, that if she was chosen, she would give him Helen, the most beautiful woman in all of Greece. Yes, here's your new wife. How does that sound? Great. And then the Trojan War happened, so scandalous? Yeah, sorry. Can I stop covering my eyes now, Taylor? I don't. I want to see now. She's gone now. She's gone? Okay, she's gone now. Whoa, that's better. Oh, don't want to see anything, you know, too inappropriate or anything. Number seven, Prometheus. Oh, wise and mighty Prometheus, what knowledge do you bring us humble people today? Fire. Fire good. The god that gave us fire. Let's be real about this. We, we needed fire. It's a big one. The same way I need McDonald's in my life. I love the clown's hamburgers. I love you. Trouble is, for Prometheus, he was told by Zeus that we couldn't have fire. He was gatekeeping it. Toxic, right? I know. So Prometheus disobeyed him and gave it to us anyway. Imagine all the Slovakia the Greeks made after that. Oh, yummy. Zeus being Zeus was pretty cheesed about the whole thing, so he sentenced poor Prometheus to an eternity of suffering. A large eagle would come by every day and just take a chunk out of him the same way liposuction makes celebrities look 20 again. It's one thing to disobey dad, but to disobey the king of kings? Buddy, you're gonna be grounded. Number six, Ares. So now that we know who Aphrodite is a little bit, this next one has some juice to it. Time to really spill this tea, this cosmic tea. When Aphrodite married Hephaestus, the god of fire, it sounds like a spicy romance at first, but it was really just an arranged one. You know, not much love to it, the classic. Well, truth be told, she really had her eyes the whole time on the god of war, Ares. I mean, to be fair, hard not to. He's the god of war, AKA the spirit of battle. She was a big fan of warfare, you know? She wanted a bad boy, so Aphrodite was like, hey, we should have an affair with our counterparts over here. And Aphrodite is an Ares hooked up in Hephaestus' bed. How rude is that? I mean, to be fair though, 
He's a god of fire. That's probably a nice bed. Definitely beats a water bed, that's for sure. Yeah, should we go to Poseidon's fishy bunk bed or this one? Number five, Baron Samdi. Okay, this one is a throwback to my gamer audience. Remember in, in GoldenEye, Nintendo 64, after beating the game, you got to unlock those two bonus levels? Remember the Egyptian level? And the dude that won't die no matter how much you sling his way? Don't forget the evil cackle too. He's, he's always laughing, that guy, isn't he? Well, who is that? It always creep me out. Well, besides being a cool Bond villain, it's actually a Haitian god or voodoo spirit. Baron Samadhi. He's a spirit of mischief, death, up to no goodness, and has a fondness for rum and tobacco. That's kind of cool. He ain't all bad though. It's said that he can cure any disease or ailment of any mortal should he want to. Kind of like, kind of like the anti-hero of the gods. Pretty cool. I just refuse to replay the level from Golden Knight. I'm scared, unless a big tall comedian who works on a History Channel wants to hold my hand while I play. Number four, Eros, the son of chaos. I'd say that's a little scandalous. No. In Greek mythology, Eros was the god of love and s love and or s this guy has got it all. You may have heard about his Roman counterpart. She comes around every February with a bow and arrow and boinks you right in your butt. Makes us fall in love with our, you know, friends, coworkers, I don't know. That's right, Cupid and Eros. They were a nice couple. Don't mind the plastic couch coverings. Come on in, take your shoes off, stay a while. We're a weird household. In early historical references, Eros is a primordial god, but more recently he's considered one of Ares and Aphrodite's children, part of the winged love gods. Yeah, the winged love gods, what a crew that is. Imagine them showing up on America's Best Dance Crew. The Jabwalkies would be so screwed. Just float in. Around 700 BC, ancient Greek source, Hesiod Theogony, I mentioned that earlier, he also mentioned Eros as the fourth god ever to exist. First there is Chaos, and then the Earth, Gaia, and Tartarus, the Abyss, and then our boy, Eros. In 400 BC, however, Permenides, another philosopher, says Eros was the first god. Either way, I'm excited to see Harry Styles play Marvel's version of Eros. When it comes to love and f I'd say they nailed the casting. I don't know, just saying. What, what's up? Number three. Shinigami. If you thought I was going to talk about Japanese Shimigamis and evil gods from the hit anime series, then you clearly don't know Chetty. I'll give you the facts first. Basically, they are evil gods, spirits from those who have passed on, except they're just down bad, dude. Their intentions are completely dishonorable. They like to possess the living and make them do heinous things. A lot of times, sadly, it's to unalive someone. Kind of like Peter Pan's shadow, but instead of harmless mischief, it's folks not waking up in the morning, if you know what I'm saying. And of course, where do I get my fix for Shimigamis? But from that one really popular anime about young people who really are emotional and being possessed by Shimigamis. Oh man, talk about scandal and drama. Huh. Number two, Loki. The god of mischief? Why, of course, we had to sneak in this little devil. We've seen variations of Loki on film, really. Tom Hiddleston does a great job in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but just how accurate is he to the real god of mischief? Well, Loki in Old Norse translates to close, but you don't want this one anywhere near you. Loki was known to cheat those around him, so often that his mouth had to be stitched shut. I mentioned the underworld earlier when I was talking about Hermes the Messenger. Well, Loki is the father of hell, ruler of the land of the dead, the underworld. In our last collab, we mentioned why it's important to keep your pets on a leash and all. Well, Loki is the proud father of Fenrir, the massive wolf demon that historically was prophesized to eat Odin during Ragnarok. So yeah, a little scandalous, I'd say. Number one, Kratos. The real Kratos in some depictions is the one who ordered poor Prometheus to be chained up or does it himself, which is bad. That's, that's not cool. Chaining a dude up so that a big bird can eat his insides is a little crazy. It's a little scandalous too, but I'm gonna throw in the Kratos that most of us know today. Okay, yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. I know, I hear you. I think a lot of you will agree with me that they took lame chains up Prometheus Kratos and turned him into the remorseful, bloodthirsty god with sun issues. Kratos. He's got a decent story arc though, that's pretty cool though, right? Plus, you know, the games are a lot of fun. The Kratos we love and know had left the world of Greek gods and after pretty much destroying them all, made it to Norse land. That's right, crossing mythology. That's, that's pretty scandalous. Taylor agrees. How much more scandalous can you get? That's like celebrities when they try to reinvent themselves. Sure, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man and he's great, but some folks from a few years ago might remember his past. You can't hide from that, Greek god or not. Those are the top 10 scandalous gods in ancient history, Very but scandalous. guess what? I think there's more. Oh, there probably will be more. Let us know for a part, part two. Part two, hit that thumbs up. Thumb there's for the two. Somewhere. There's a button somewhere. I'm Taylor McWaters. I'm Big Chad. Bye. Bye. Cool, this place is haunted. That's great. <laughs> oh. As we're talking about gods. Yeah, we're talking about gods, there's a knock on the door. 
Hello. We are, oh, no, that's okay. I think this is you. Oh, I walked off, I'm like, see ya, just up, kidding. That was you, dude. Sorry, Dad. So, I'll sorry, sorry, Go to your room. <laughs> D no! I tried my best, but I don't succeed. It's like my favorite, like on non like ironical like genre of music, dude. Like it's just so like I'm like I hate this music, but I'm like, mom and 